China is again trying an old trick, using cheap export and violating market practices in an attempt to dominate global export while getting rid of its surplus production through the new threes, EVs, solar panels, and lithium-ion batteries. Welcome to China Insider, I'm David Zhang. Now remember the CCP in 2015 talked about Made in China 2025. While most of it seems to have failed, the CCP has focused on making the number one priority on that list, electric vehicles, to be the front and center of its campaign to dominate global exports. Now most people assume that when China talks about its exports, whether that's an electric car or a solar panel or a battery, it's some sort of an economic strategy. But that's actually the wrong assumption because China views these exports as a, a national security strategy so that they're part of a weaponization campaign to use for commercial exports to become weapons of war. In fact, the trifecta of lithium ion batteries, solar panels, and electric vehicles, that's actually the new engines, what they're calling the big three for China's economic warfare. Now, the end goal here is to destroy other companies from other countries. And the way to do so is quite simple. They basically flood the market with cheaply made electric vehicles, Chinese made lithium batteries, and also dominate exports on solar panels, which they have already achieved. And it makes a perfect moment because Western governments, particularly Europe, uh, they dug themselves into the problem when they mandated emission targets on cars by 2035. So yep, the CCP has found a perfect way to invade the West through the obsession with renewable energy movement, using climate change and everything around that to strangle them with their own rules. So now the very people who are forcing the entire region to adopt to the renewable target, they're now scrambling against the CCP's EV invasion. Now this of course isn't the first time that China has tried this strategy. Huawei, the phone maker slash telecom maker, has done so in the past. They basically use prices so cheap that other competitors simply cannot match the loss in profits. And that's why many European nations still have 5G and 4G infrastructure made by Huawei Telecom. Now, the electric vehicle industry is a whole different ballgame. Take the Xiaomi Su7, which launched recently. Now, Citibank researchers estimate that each car that it sells, they lose almost 10,000 US dollars on it. And that's based on a projected volume of 60,000 units uh, being produced this year. Now, Citi also estimates that the SU7 would generate a net loss of about $566 million, which breaks down to a loss of about 9,400 per car, which is that close to 10,000 that we were just talking about. Neo, another car maker from China, operates not on profitability either. In fact, almost on pure losses. Neo lost about 835 million US dollars from April of 2023 through June of 2023. So within the span of two months, that works out to be a net loss, about 35,000 per car that it sells. So it's almost like Neo is gifting a whole nother car every time someone buys one of their cars. So why would Chinese company do this? Well, because they're backed by the Chinese government and because it's a top-down strategy mandated to do so. The government incentivizes companies in China to sell electric cars and to sell them at a loss in order to gain market shares. Because eventually down the line, when everything sold is from China, that's when you have no more competition and you can basically dictate whatever the price would be and that's when they turn a profit. But right now, the key part here is market share. So aside from BYD, all other EV makers from China currently operates at a net loss. And their goal isn't really to make a profit anyways, because this is a part, like I said, a national strategy which is to win market share. Uh, no other country has their company on a long-term loss of such a scale before their CEO or their entire board is fired. But the Chinese ones can, and in fact they do, because the government gives subsidies to help them withstand their long-term losses and keep growing. So when Neo, for example, nearly ran out of cash back in 2020, a local government immediately injected $1 billion for a 24% stake and then a state-controlled bank led a group of other lenders to pump in another $1.6 billion. And so this story continues to happen. And another reason is simply that Chinese products are just not as good, so they're not as attractive to the consumers, but because they're so much cheaper. It's almost like the price outweighs the performance. So their only way to compete is through the lower prices. Now, let's briefly take a look back in history at how Apple 
uh, was competing with Huawei for smartphone shares, uh, market shares in that space. So at some point before the Trump administration sanctioned Huawei, the Chinese phone maker was set to take over the total volume in terms of sales from Apple and uh, as well as Samsung. Now, does that mean that Apple's iPhones were actually getting worse? Well, no, it's just that Chinese phones were much cheaper. Huawei phones were much cheaper. So it's a constant debate among consumers when it comes to quality versus price. And for many people, price actually makes more sense than quality when it comes down to it. Now, most of us, frankly, don't really care, right? For the phone example, that is, uh, about the quality or how many features it has. But when it comes to a car safety or quality, I think that matters a bit more. So car buyers, they look at quality, they look at safety features and prices. According to Edmunds, the top three points in which electric vehicle car buyers are looking for, one of them is price, the other is quality, and the third is vehicle type. So Chinese EV cars, as videos suggest, like this one, they seem to not meet the safety aspect as well as Western makers, but they are meeting the price point. So when it comes down to things like crash tests or brake tests or safety tests in general, we also don't know if Chinese car makers are actually faking it or are they actually passing it through those inspection tests. Well, of course, the U.S. has largely defended its companies like Apple on the smartphone side. But in my view, Apple has a much better user experience to begin with as well as build quality. So that was already there. The problem is now the U.S. has to again face another challenge with now basically phones on wheels, electric cars, and Tesla is the primary target of multiple attacks from Chinese EV makers along with its competitions from like Audi or Volkswagen or Ford. And so it is in much more of a pressurized environment than Apple ever was. Now the EU is also a whole different story. Now as news report, one in four EVs sold in the European Union are Chinese EVs. So that's against multiple automakers, like I said. They're also doing EVs themselves, like Volkswagen. Uh, but you might also ask, is it really bad that Chinese cars are a quarter of the sales? Or is it really bad that Tesla now has competitions in the EV space? Before we continue, here's a great product for your skin. I know most of our viewers are male audience members, but I want to introduce you to this product as it's a great gift option for your wife, girlfriend, or other family members. This is the German brand Derma Rollers Intensive Hyaluronic Acid Mask, and it serves two purposes for your skin. One is to hydrate, and the other is to protect. So it's a great gift option to your loved ones, family members, etc. But also, if you're just looking to start a skincare routine yourself, this is a great first step. Just use it once or twice a week after washing your face, and you will instantly notice a smoother skin, but also better looking skin. Check out the link in the description below. It's on sale now, and if you're interested in any other products in the Blueberry Creative Shop, use my code DAVID for a 15% off. Also, if you spend $70 or more, you will receive free shipping in the US. So normally I would say probably not, but what if these car makers, the Western ones, right, private companies, publicly traded companies, they're up against an entire country in their mobilization plan. The very goal is intended to win the competition, to destroy the competition. So what if the real purpose of a Chinese car maker isn't to sell cars, but is to destroy that particular country's entire industry? If that is so, does this question still become one of competition or fairness? It doesn't. And so it also raises the question of exporting cars, right? Um, it becomes a national security question, which is probably where things are moving to uh, instead of an economic one. So that's precisely where things are with the European lawmakers. They're finding themselves launching investigations into China's cheap exports as it's destroying their domestic shares in the market. Uh, in no same business, or in any business executive's head, would this be allowed to happen, but it's happening in China. Right? In the eyes of Chinese car makers, it's actually part of the normal process because they are subsidized to do this. Uh, in fact, Chinese commerce officials are now heading to Europe to try to convince the region to continue letting China's market shares grow in this particular industry. And that's on top of many of the European automakers already making their cars in China. Plus, China has a stranglehold on both lithium-ion uh, batteries as well as the solar panels, which, like I said, these are a critical part of that renewable energy transformation campaign. And so for Europe, it's really tough out there. Want to know what's even more ridiculous or sinister? China admitted that their overcapacity with EV production is a problem. 
And so what they're doing is if we have excessive inventory, why don't we just ship them out at a much cheaper price? It's like I'm, I'm just throwing all of my precious pr products away uh, at fraction of the price. Normally you think that, hey, that's pretty gracious of them, right? They're just basically contributing to our industry or whatnot. But that's really not the graciousness at work here. That's the fact that they're exporting deflation and cheap goods that will eventually ruin the domestic market. Someone online was saying that I'm waiting for the day where you can buy a $10,000 EV from Walmart. <laughs> That's where things are headed with China. Now, the Washington Post quoted auto industry consultant Michael Dunn saying that Chinese factories can produce 40 million vehicles a year, 15 million more than they need to meet domestic demand. So that means all the extra cars, it's, it's like they're popping cars out like popcorn. All of that is aimed at flooding the market outside of China. Now, one concern, of course, is how to defend against that. Tariffs, right? That's a word that often comes up. The U.S. may be okay for now since Chinese-made cars are subject to a 27.5% tariff. So that's 25% plus an additional 2.5% on those cars. But companies like BYD, which is a Chinese automaker, they want to set up shop in Mexico, which would mean that as long as they meet a 75% Mexico-made parts threshold, they could be only subjected to that 2.5% on tariffs rather than that 27.5%. Also, for the US, if Chinese vehicles are made in places like South Korea or any other country that has this free trade agreements with the United States, then they can also circumvent the tariffs. So both parties in the US, lawmakers, they want to increase this, at least the, in the categorization or in the rules which would be on the Chinese imports. According to the Wall Street Journal, at least with their interview with Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, the Biden administration is moving forward, raising Trump-era tariffs on some Chinese products, of course, including electric vehicles. And Trump himself has also apparently announced that he would apply a tariff of 100% on cars built in Mexico by Chinese companies for U.S. market sales. So that would effectively double the previous tariffs that he had sought to do. Now, Europe, again, like I said, is having it much harder than us here in uh, North America. There will be a decision on the initial tariffs by the summer, but because their car makers already make cars in China, that means tariffs would also apply to those cars when they are imported back into Europe. Even if the EU learns from its mistake with the solar panels, which now it's actually completely reliant on China, they still have to face the problem that imports of Chinese cars, it's going to continue to grow more than now. By 2027, it's going to be a much higher share of, of the market. and so. How do you defend against that? And this is really China's plan to try to revive its domestic economy through the cheap exports. And it seems like the only way is for some really harsh sanctions like it did with Huawei to stop this. But from China's perspective, the Chinese Communist Party's perspective, this is a win-win scenario. They get to get some money back, but also ruin other countries' market through what they're doing now with the EVs. And so as this becomes the emerging market that they're gonna fight the war on, I guess that's where things are taking now, which is one side you're trying to combat against this malpractice from China, while the other side, which is China, they're going to try to circumvent it. So we're basically repeating the story of prior, uh, prior to 2020 again, just with a different industry. Anyways, that's it today for the explanation on what China's doing with their electric vehicles along with other emerging technology, particularly in the renewable energy industry and uh, basically why countries are being alerted on this practice. If you enjoy the content, leave a like, comment below your thoughts and subscribe to our channel. And also check out my uh, sponsor, Blueberry Creative's uh, sale right now for this derma roller mask. All right, until next time, bye-bye.